Bob, on the Deshaun Watson story, uh, he had mentioned baggage with Deshaun Watson. And yes, there's some baggage, no matter what today's ruling or uh, the, the charges dropped or they would not pursue them. Um, it's hard enough to be successful in the National Football League. Carrying baggage is no help to you or your teammates. No, there's a circus to that. There will be a media circus wherever he ends up. He's never going to take another snap in Houston. We know that. But wherever he goes, wherever that might be, and if he can play right away or what, there's going to be, yeah, there's going to be a media circus surrounding him. But you have that even without some of the, uh, the stories. I did not realize, Craig, when you mentioned Adam Schefter, speaking of Deshaun Watson, did he really tweet that out? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't Copy, have said anything if yeah, he didn't. I, I, I didn't Copy and paste it from the agent. Yeah. Text to him. I mean, he's got 30,000 replies, not because he didn't do it. He ain't clear. Yeah, he's, he People texted. are pissed at that, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's basically the mouthpiece for Deshaun Watson's lawyer, and he's not supposed to be that. Nope. He's a reporter, and this is not the first, the second. I mean, what what times are we on now where Shefty's been called out for stuff like this? Uh, constantly, basically, and I don't, I don't have anything against the guy. I think he does his job pretty well. But he has become kind of a puppet during this Deshaun Watson story, and he's been a puppet at times for the NFL on other stuff, and it's very obvious. And that tweet was, like, it it couldn't have been any clearer that that was sent from Deshaun Watson's attorney, basically. I mean, that's why people are reacting the way that they are. If it was a harmless little opinion by him, then people would have just looked at it and been like, okay, whatever. Well, but it's the fact that it's so glaringly obvious, a pro-Deshaun Watson tweet and, and from his camp, that that's why it pisses people off. Yeah, and... I'll just juxtapose it to the coverage of the of the baseball lockout that we ju that we just had. This was, and th there were several pieces written on this, but this is one of the first times where you got a genuine, like both sides of the argument coverage. Because in 1994, what was the national attitude towards that, Smokey? It was the players are greedy. I can't believe they would do this. How can they strike and take baseball away from me? I would kill to play this and yada, yada, yada. And yet the richer guys who pay the players are sitting there going, yeah, that's right. They're jerks. You know, well, okay. You know, and not to say that either side is, is completely right or wrong, but there's a reason these disputes happen. It's, you know, some wealthy people arguing and uh, we got a genuine look at what the players are saying and the players had avenues to say, this is why we feel this way. So the coverage was different. And, and you see that, you know, from Adam Schefter, where you're just a shill for everything that's pro NFL, then it kind of makes you look worse seeing as that like, there's avenues to show that there's other sides to the story. Yeah. Tell me if this is from Adam Schefter or from Adam Schefter's lawyer. This is why Deshaun Watson from the beginning welcomed a police investigation. He felt he knew that the truth would come out, and today a grand jury did not charge him on any of the criminal complaints. Now, that might not seem like that much of a lightning rod post, but... This is why Deshaun Watson from the very beginning welcomed a police investigation. The truth would come up, blah, blah, blah. Like, that's not, like, just on the surface, not that big of a deal. But when you realize that his tweet before was like, hey, Deshaun Watson's not going to be charged. Okay, cool. That's fine. But then yeah. that's clearly a different. That's an opinion. That's exactly. basically giving an opinion. Exactly. Which, it wasn't and, even his opinion. And I'm not even that upset by it, but I can see where people are coming from. And I guess I'm, I don't even think upsets even the word. What I'm annoyed by is just the fact that he's kind of fallen into the, of doing this like every couple of months. We're getting a shefty thing where it's like, dude, what? Well, one of the other things about his text or tweet was that there's some uh, women's groups that are furious because of the statistics of a claiming of any kind of sexual assault or harassment and things like that. And so they're a little bit That's upset. Not with They might be, I guess, upset with the, the ruling, but they're upset with the fact he is taking a side on this. Yeah, it's, look, there's 22 different accusers of Deshaun Watson to some degree. Nine of them were involved in a criminal complaint that got dismissed today. And, and the criminal complaint... Being dismissed does not necessarily mean that he wasn't guilty of something. It means that the burden of proof for the grand jury is, which, look, our friend Dan Lust has been tweeting about this for a week and doing a great job saying the burden of proof for, or the burden to get an indictment for grand juries is pretty low. So the fact that this happened means that they probably did not have a lot in their corner uh, when it came to these accusers and as far as evidence and, and, and moving forward. But that doesn't mean that didn't happen. But these are really difficult, especially if you read some of the things that, that happened. It's really going to be difficult to prove without, you know, there's not really physical evidence of a lot of these. It's just, 
you know, Deshaun Watson is accused of doing some inappropriate things of which there probably would not be physical evidence. So it's, it's, he said, she said, and a lot of uh, criminal cases don't want to get into that, especially when it comes to a high profile person like Deshaun Watson, because then your jury pool is probably pretty tainted with football fans. Uh, the, you, you make good points, both of you across the board on that, uh, from Phil, the PAC 12 network is the problem. And we've mentioned that before. Yep. That's one of the things that Kliakoff thought he could maybe wave a magic wand. And I'm not being negative about Kliakoff. I'm just thinking he thought he could handle that. It's and that nothing. Well, he's changed. trying to, I yeah. mean, they can't do anything until there's a new TV deal. So like, that's what I was saying earlier was when he had the comments, it was like, yeah, that's our main priority, and it's all about the new TV deal, and that will be our main focus with the new TV and deal. And until they get that, they really can't do anything else, honestly, or they can't maybe get through other things. They could still be working on them. From Matthew, are the women in other NFL cities okay with Watson playing there? Um I think it's probably a mixed bag. You know, I think there's probably a lot of people that don't even know about the story that they probably, you know, show up at NFL games. I'm sure there's a ton of others that know all about it, and I'm sure there's a mixture of opinions. I mean, to your question, I mean, I don't think we're going to see, like, protests outside of, you know, prior to Deshaun Watson appearances. I mean, maybe a couple people get on local TV doing something like that. But, yeah, I'm sure there's a – you know, this isn't just a Deshaun Watson thing either. This is for a lot of women out there, like – another slap in the face after thousands of slaps in the faces when there's been stories like this, you know, and, and that's why such a big part of the, the topic is, you know, it's such touchy territory because he said, she said, or she said, she said, or he said, she, whatever it is, is like, we, none of us really know. And we can only go off of what we do know, but there, we, what we do know is there are a lot of times that a woman has a real complaint and people just dismiss her because, well, no, this dude's a star football player. He doesn't have to resort to that or, oh, well, they're clearly in it together. Well, what, what do you base that off? Oh, they're just trying to take him down. You know, like there's, it, it's or uh, some, some things that are sickening. Like, what did you wear that night? Or yeah, how come you I mean, went back like, to the room with him? You know, right? and so for, I, I think, I, I don't think 22 women just randomly got together to decide to go after this star quarterback. Uh, you know, I, I just, I have a hard time believing that, but the, the legal system did what the legal system does, but you can understand why a lot of women in particular, especially those who have been through something like that before, maybe a similar situation, are really bothered by, by, to, by the reaction of somebody like an Adam Schefter to the news today because it just totally dismisses what they were you know complaining about or or uh, what they were pursuing with Deshaun Watson and it just it erases it and it's like okay everybody celebrate because he can throw the football again for my favorite team and that and that's what's got to be frustrating every NFL team that wants Deshaun Watson I oh there's about to be a lot of hypocrites say, oh yeah celebrated the fact that he's now available to them and that's what I'm glad way. he didn't go to Washington in a way because I'm glad I don't have to face that moral dilemma of like, oh, geez, like, you know what and, I mean? And, and look, maybe Washington did this even a couple of days before Deshaun Watson knowing that the fact that they haven't released a well, report and all this stuff. I'd love like, to think that. They, they <laughs> can't get in that business, but maybe they don't care. Well, here's Washington. another thing. Yeah. Some NFL draft boards, there are players who are blacklisted. They're not going to be drafted by certain teams no matter how talented they are or how much they need a position of a player who's talented. And in the case of Deshaun Watson, I think if you say the 32 teams of, let's say, 20 of them, I, I would say there's probably oh, a handful of franchises that say we're not going to touch that. Yeah, there's, there's some franchises that are lucky that they don't have to because they have quarterbacks yeah. already. Sure, that, yeah. like, and so they can take themselves out of this discussion easily going, oh, well, I mean, we didn't even talk about it. We've got, yeah. we've, we, we've got Justin Herbert. Oh, look at that. What do you know? Uh, but there are other you know teams like, oh, I'll just say the Cleveland Browns. Like, you know, that probably shouldn't say anything until they would make a decision on it because, you know, he's better than the guy that they have. Matthew, you asked, uh, am I getting my messages deleted? No, it, reading, I've read some of them. Is it okay? How come it's okay for him to play in Tampa but not Houston? He could play anywhere. He's just not going to play in Houston because that's his choice. Yeah, I think that's just, uh, that was decided before this even really fully hit the fan. Like him and, uh, him and Houston were kind of, I mean, it appeared like it was going to be a match made in heaven at one point, but then like there there came a turning point there, and it all kind of lines up with with these accusations as well. But yeah, it's just it it feels like it's probably far too toxic at this point. And and John McClain's made it very clear the Texans are you know well, he didn't even up. like he didn't even have to come to the facility this year, and they needed him. 
You yeah. know, like they, I mean, they could have used him uh, this year if there was any kind of, and the NFL hadn't suspended him yet. I mean, he was just not playing for the Texans this year. That was his choice, Matthew. He did not want to play for the Texans anymore and demanded a trade and said he wasn't going to play for them. He was going to sit out uh, and, and he was going to lose money sitting out. And then this, this happened and it kind of gave them each a convenient excuse to not play him. But no, go ahead. But, but he does not want to play there anymore. Missouri, Quanzo Martin out as their head basketball coach. And then in broadcast news, Joe Buck will join Trey Aikman on Monday.